Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. Today, we are going to be taking a closer look at Two Tree's newest 3D printer. It's called the SK-1. It's a Core XY. And boy, um, I think I've seen you somewhere before. I mean, I, maybe you have as well. Um, that's because they are actually targeting um, the Creality K-1 and the Bamboo Labs P-1P with this 3D printer. I mean, the specs sheet that I got was that's their, what their target audience is. It's going after those two companies. I'm not gonna go about how it competes because frankly, I don't have those two printers and it's not a which one wins type of contest. This is actually a review of this printer and the out of box experience. To me, I think we have evolved past the tinkering stage of 3D printers. We just expect them to work out of the box. Now there's going to be minimal effort done by me, which is making sure all the screws are tightened, belts are tightened, and so on and so forth, making sure it has the newest firmware that's available on their website, and look for any Q&A if I'm having a problem with this printer on their website. I'm not going to go on to any community forums or anything, because as a customer, I believe that's where the consumer will go first. So let's get into this 3D printer a little bit more. Currently, it is $4.99 US on their website, and it was packaged very well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging, go over some specs, and see what type of assembly it needs to get it up and running. Okay, let's talk about the Two Trees SK-1. The print volume is 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters square. The max print speed is 700 millimeters per second, but 300 is about average. Max printing temp is 300C has a 4.3 inch touchscreen display. It also has Z-Tilt inclined leveling, linear motion systems, Wi-Fi, input shaping, and 36 point bed mesh leveling. It has a direct drive and is also running Clipper. Now one of the first things you're gonna do when unboxing this is taking out the six stays for transport. You can remove six of these and then on the sides, you're going to replace with uh, two of the provided bolts. Then feed the PTFE tube on the side. Mount your filament spool holder, your display bracket, and plug in your display. Found it a little bit difficult to get that uh, plugged in, but needless to say, it just slides right in. Attach the Wi-Fi antenna, just do not over tighten it. And double check the power suited for where your region is. And it's all assembled. The SK-1 has custom extrusions and uh, a steel base. Looks pretty solid to me. Now let's quickly go over the touch screen. Right here you have the move and temp, unload and load filament, and the fan speed. Next we have the folders menu. You have your local, and there's no USB plugged in, so I still gotta click on it anyways. And then you have your history. Unfortunately, it just shows you the first five uh, or latest five. You can't scroll. Then you can click on the system, click on and join your network if you so choose for Wi-Fi printing. And here's your calibrate to level your bed and do your input shaping. You can go to FAQs, online manual, and the contact. You can scan those QR codes for the manuals if you so choose. And the first thing we're going to do is level the bed. We're going to go and hit settings and then go under calibrate. This is a four step process. First, we're gonna click on home. There's three independent motors control the three Z axis respectively to do a true level heated bed. Next, we're going to adjust the Z and you have to click on one of the buttons towards the bottom there for how much you wanna do the height. And you're gonna take a sheet of paper and move it up and down and to where it just barely drags. And then click okay. Next, we're gonna do the bed leveling. This will take a few minutes for it to heat up. It'll go through its Z tilt once again. Um, it basically does this every time and just to make sure that it's homed correctly. And then it will start doing the bed mesh leveling. This is 36 points. And this whole procedure for leveling and everything, including now the input shaping at the end, took about eight minutes to complete. So. Just be on the lookout that this is a kind of a long process, but um, if you're not uh, moving the machine around, um, you may not be doing this that often. 
This will do input shaping on both the X and Y axis. You can see it first starts ramping up here and then <laughs> it will literally vibrate your whole table or workspace. So this whole process will take a few minutes for both the X and Y to calibrate. And then once it's done, it will go ahead and save. And then you are all done. Now let's go ahead and uh, connect it to the Wi-Fi. Once you've connected to Wi-Fi, this is where you can take your IP address and throw it into a web browser. And this is where you will find the Fluid uh, Clipper web interface. Now I did attach a USB webcam to here. It's a Logitech and you could basically use almost any webcam. You will see there's a lot of information in here. You go into the console, you can see your print jobs. You can click on your history and see all the print jobs you've done. And then you can see how bad your um, bed is. Yeah, that's your bed mesh and it looks like it's falling off a cliff there. Yep, um, hmm. but we won't look at that right now. Then you have your configuration file system information, and then you can click on your settings here, and this is where I added the webcam. Now on the included USB, you'll find the product manual, and you'll also find the slicer configs for Cura as well as Prusa slicer. It is nice that a company did provide these, and um, I did try both the Prusa and Cura. I found that uh, the Cura profile did work a little bit better, but again, you choose which slicer you want to use. And just go ahead and import it, and you're all set and ready to start printing. Now that wasn't too bad. And I would like to also introduce today's video sponsor, PCB Away. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services, such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCBWay. And PCBWay is offering some special coupons for the rest of December. It's called their free Christmas coupons. Look at all these savings that you could use. I mean, go ahead and use these coupons for the rest of December. And I'd like to thank PCB Wave for sponsoring today's video of the Two Trees SK-1. Well, I mean, let's get around to it. How does the printer print? Let's go ahead and take a look at some test prints, shall we? Now this is the tricolor Jesse filament, and it's a silk. This was done uh, with the 17 minute Benchy that was on the USB. It came out rather nice. You can see that uh, there is a little bit of um, under extrusions by the windows, but overall a pretty solid bench heat. So no layer shifts or anything. So I think for a 17 minute bench heat, it did rather good. So next I decided to slice my own bench heat. This is about 300 millimeters per second. This is using Polymaker Purple. And this bench heat took about 30 minutes to complete. Overall, it came out rather nice. You can see that uh, the layers are very consistent. Uh, there's a little bit of something that happened here. I see two little holes. I have no idea what happened there. You know, there's definitely a little bit of stringing going on. First layer looks pretty good. And then again, this is a 30 minute benchy. Uh, tops looks good. And you can see the same issue happened right there around the porthole. But overall, I guess it's not too bad. I've definitely seen a lot worse. So let's continue on. Next, I decided to do the clock spring vase. This is the stair jumble vase. This is at about 160% scale. And this is using the Jesse tricolor filament from Printed Solid. I mean, this literally came out perfect. From the bottom layer all around, I mean, this is just memorizing to look at. Just seeing the changes in colors, I've just never seen filament like this before. This was a true example of what this printer can do. Since Christmas is coming around the corner here, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I went on to a Patreon that I support, which is Stephen the Lightspeed, and I decided to print out these what's called annoying boxes. Yep, they take a lot of screws, and you have to take these screws out if you want to see what's inside. 
And this is the screws for this mini annoying box. This was printed at a 0.20 layer height and it came out really, really nice. No string or anything. This is print in place, so everything just falls in. And this is the little compartment that you put the cash in. All you do is you take it and you slide it in and then you close it and then you insert all the screws. That's pretty darn ingenious. Then you take your wad of cash. Yeah, it makes it look like a lot more. And it's a 20 and several singles in here. And then you just go ahead and fold it up and you shove it into this uh, little cash box right here. And then once you shove it in here, you go ahead and place it inside. There's an arrow and then you close it up. And now we just seal it with all these screws. So I'm gonna cheat during the assembly. I'm gonna use like a little wow stick here. Make sure it has very little torque. And you do actually print out this uh, tool to uh, screw in the screws and it has its own little holding area. That's pretty darn nifty. But again, I can use the wow stick to uh, secure them, so let's get going. You mean like ASMR? And last but not least, go ahead and uh, screw in the screw installation and removal tool. Wow, that came out really, really nice. And you have that uh, two holes there to fish a string to hold it. Awesome, really, really cool. And of course I didn't stop there. I have more annoying boxes to assemble, but I won't do it right now. So what are my final thoughts on the Two Trees SK-1? What are some of the pluses and minuses? Well, let's go ahead and go over some of them right now. And one of the first things is definitely the retention for the, <laughs> for the build plate. Really like it. Second, I want to address overall build quality. Now, it was mentioned on a social media site that this machine felt like it was slapped together. I really don't think so. I mean, look at here. Just for the strain relief, this is all milled out. You know, I mean, everything is just has a good fit and finish. There's nothing on here that just says, hey, I've been slapped together. No, I will totally disagree with that. You have these extrusions that are custom for this machine and everything is nice fit and finish. You have linear rails all over. You have cable stays that are custom for this. I mean, no, I do not say that this is slapped together. You have a nice little light bar to light up your area. So yeah, I think it's built really, really well. And I like that we are past leveling knobs. I mean, it should be engineered enough where we don't need leveling knobs on the bottom of a bed. Now, what are some of the negatives? First, the spool holder. It literally barely fits a spool of Polymaker. I couldn't use really any other brand. I was also getting some under extrusion for any of the files that I was slicing on my own using the Cura or Prusa Slicer configs that they provided. Now, I was able to rectify this by doing gyroscopic infill at a 120% flow for infill. As you can see, everything looks nice and crisp. Now, this is definitely a slicer issue because um, any of the pre-sliced files that they did, they were fine for the infill. Now, this machine vibrates a lot and I had some screws starting to back out, which is odd because a lot of the screws have Loctite, but the ones that were backing out do not. And another thing is when you stop a print, it will park the hot end to the front left. <laughs> not a fan of that. I'd rather see the hot end in the left rear or right rear because it makes removing the build plate very, very difficult. And you have to like literally just try to work around the hot end. I would like to see that park in the right rear or left rear. 
Next is the display. Uh, yeah, it's a decent display, but you know what? It doesn't give you all that much information. When you are printing locally off the machine from USB, it will tell you the file it's printing and how much time and what's left. But if you're doing it off of the Clipper web interface, it just shows you the hot end temp and the bed temp. It needs to have a little bit more information. I'd rather see just a Clipper screen on here. Now the power supply fan and the cooling fans for the boards are always on. That's the decibel reading for this. And this is the decibel reading while the machine is chugging along at good pace. Now, I don't know if I'm a fan of people showing decibel readings because you know what? I have a 20 by 20 garage and it's insulated. You may be in a different room and guess what? Your decibel readings may be different. So what's my opinion? Sorry, Marge, I gotta call bull crap on that. Well, that's about it. I believe I had a real positive out of box experience with the SK-1. There was no hidden surprises and I got some fantastic prints along the way. Is SK-1 perfect? No, but really no product really is perfect. All I could ask for is that it works as advertised and it did. Now, currently on Two Trees website for the US, it's $4.99. And if you're looking to save some additional dough, well, guess what? There's a coupon down below that you can use along with the link to save yourself some additional money. Now, I do not know how long that uh, coupon code's good for, so use it while you can. Now, for everyone else that's been sticking around, I totally appreciate it. If you like, I could stick around for a while. You know why? Because there's a giveaway. There's two, one for first place and one for second place. First place will get SK-1, second place will get a spool of filament. Now, of course, you're asking, well, what are the rules? Well, as of today, as of right now, you have to be in the lower 48 of the United States and 18 years or older. If any of those change, I'll update the description because I'm still working with two trees to confirm this. Now, well, I'm sure you're asking yourself, now how do I enter? Well, it's kind of going to be a unique way. And you're going to use the comment section for this. You're going to be asked to fill in five questions. Question number one is, there were fasteners that have to be removed before you power on the machine. How many fasteners were removed during the un assembly or assembly of this machine. Well, taking things out. So that's how many fasteners were removed, not including the screws from the machine. Number two is who are the two creators of these files? Who created the, the vase and who created the annoying box? Number three is how many screws are in the annoying box? Not including the tool, just how many screws? Number four is What's the time on the clock behind me? Well, it's not plugged in, so don't worry. The time hasn't changed. <laughs> so what's the time on the clock? And the final question is, is what will be your first print? So a recap, five questions. How many of the stays were removed during the unpacking of the machine? Who are the two creators of these two files? How many screws are in the annoying box? What's the time on the clock? and what will be your first print. So you will have one month to enter into the comments those five questions or the answer to those five questions. And what's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna do a random picker for first place and second place. Now you have to pay attention, this is crucial. I am not gonna to respond to any of the comments except if someone wins. So you need to pay attention if I respond to you that you won, you have 24 hours to respond back. Otherwise, I redraw. That's for first place and second place. And then that's about it. So please pay attention. I really appreciate you tuning into Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripods Garage.